Now we're going to talk about the circular buffer design pattern. And this design pattern is one that is part of the list of design patterns at a consultancy firm, Cunningham and Cunningham, at http colon forward slash forward slash c2.com. That's http colon forward slash forward slash c2.com. No www. And they list at that consultancy's website, they list a number of design patterns, and we're going to take a look at some of those design patterns now that we've finished with the formal gang of four definitions of design patterns. One of the most popular is the circular buffer design pattern, and this design pattern comes into play when you need to store data in memory in an efficient way and you might have a certain block of data set apart for storage and you want to maximize the efficiency with which you store data in that block and in other words reuse the storage that's not being used in an efficient way and the way to do that a good way to do that is to use the circular buffer design and that looks like this you arrange memory in circular circular fashion this is each memory locations and two special locations are labeled the head and the tail you write data to the tail you read data from the head this is a, a circular buffer although it's just got a small number of of items here you can store millions of items in a circular buffer if you like and the important part is to use the tail and the head correctly move them around the circular buffer so that you maximize the efficiency with which you store your data. When you want to store a data item, you store it at the tail location, the current tail location. Storing an item or writing an item to memory goes at the tail location. And you move the tail location up one. That could be clockwise or counterclockwise. In this example, it's clockwise. So we're going to, if you want to write an item to the tail position, you then would increment the tail position by one. That would look like this. In this case, you have written an item to the tail position and moved the tail position up by one. In other words, advance the tail. So you've written to the tail and advanced the tail. Conversely, when you want to read an item from the circular buffer, you read it from the head position. So you read it from the head position and you advance the head position one after you've read that item. It goes like this. So in this case, you have read a data item and you advanced the head. Okay, let's take a look at that one more time. This is, of course, the circular buffer design pattern. You have a you have memory arranged in a circle. You see a code example of this coming up next. And you have a tail position and a head position, both clearly marked, clearly stored as head and tail. You have to maintain those pointers if you want to work with this example, work with this kind of, of design pattern. And when you store data, you write to the tail. And then after you've stored a data item in the tail position, you advance the tail one. And after you, when you want to read a data item, you read from the head. It's sort of like a, a snake with a head and a tail advancing around the circle. When you want to read a data item, you read it from the head. You advance the head one position after you've read your data item. So that's the way the circular buffer works, and that's the, the head is always chasing the tail, if you like. And it's a very efficient way of storing data because it reuses all your data items, all your data storage in time, and when you you can fill up your entire buffer and the head is next to the tail you've maximized the use of your memory and then you have to start reading from the head and you slowly empty out the the data buffer and so forth so in any case that is the circular design pattern a very efficient one for storing memory and a very effective way of of, of maximizing your memory resources and a very good design pattern